Aaron and Kyle are way smarter than I am. So if you ever call the office, anybody here can answer these questions because, uh, I, like I said, we do this every day. And for the age out question, that it's, it's really technical, and that's something that we'll follow very closely alongside you. How old is your daughter now? 13. Okay, 13, you're sitting in a much better position. We've had people come to us at 20 years, 11 months trying to figure this out. And they've got about 13 hours to file an I-526. So, um, you know, technically, the, the age freezes. When you filed an I-526 petition, USCIS will freeze your child's age. And then uh, that will remain frozen until the I-526 is approved. So that 15, 18 months, 24 months, if you're not very blessed, that age will freeze. Your child will remain 13 years old. After the I-526 is approved, though, that clock is going to start back up. So when you run into a retrogression type situation, when you're in the Chinese backlog, where you're talking about a 7, 8, 9, 15-year wait, nobody knows, that 13-year-old child potentially is at risk. And I believe there, you know, from there, you might want to answer what happens in a retrogress case when the child ages out after an I-526 was approved. Yeah, the, the Child Status Protection Act, um, which is what Colin was referencing about freezing the age, does give you credit for a certain time that the government takes to process your case. But, but you know, the, the clock does restart again during retrogression. It is very fact-specific, and it actually is different if you're doing an adjustment of status versus consular processing, too. So it, it is something that's really, uh, you know, that did need to be calculated. I literally do sit down with a, with a, a formula and a piece of paper um, with, with your ch children's, you know, dates and everything in the backlogs just to try to figure out what that looks like. Um, but just to go back to, you know, a 13-year-old, to be very honest, let's, did you know that the, your priority date's established when your I-526 is filed? So assuming that it takes 18 months for the I-526 or 20 months or 24 to get it adjudicated, even if it backlogs for two years, there's no net loss in time for you if there's a retrogression. So it needs to really be severely retrogressed or severely backlogged in order for it to literally affect your actual green card timeline because you have to wait for the I-526 to be approved anyway before you can file that I-485. And the day you file your I-526 is the day you kind of get that, that ticket at the deli counter, right? Your, your place in line for the green card. So retrogression, to be very honest, I think for India is a non-issue today. Um, if you're talking to me tomorrow, next year or a couple years from now, I think we, we may have a little bit more of an issue. But as far as just my two cents on, on India retrogression for EB-5, if you file today, chances are slim that it will seriously affect your overall net timeline for the green card. Um, so therefore, you know, children really shouldn't have an issue issue because you're really moving, you, there's zero b backlog time for your child to actually, uh, you know, age out. But um, it's a very fact specific. I don't want to get too technical on the on the CSPA, Child Status Protection Act, but there are certain protections that are put into place um, for children who are, who are getting to that age. Yeah, at 13 years old, like she mentioned, it's, it's very, very unlikely it's an issue at all. Um, they, there was always kind of a longstanding principle when China started to retrogress that we started talking about 18 is the new 21. If you had children that were 18, that's where they felt comfortable filing. But their retrogression is far more severe than India or any other country.